This is lesson 5, Integration of Trigonometric Functions. We are to evaluate the integral of dx over cosecant x minus 1. So we take note that there is a binomial in the denominator and in the numerator we have 1. We cannot perform integration by substitution because we cannot eliminate anything by doing so. So what we can do is to employ a method Think of another method we are in. We can change, change this into integrable form. One method that we can use is to multiply. Because we are given a binomial in the denominator, multiply it by its with its conjugate. So if we have cosecant x minus 1, then its conjugate would still contain cosecant x and 1, but it will have an opposite sign. So that's a plus cosecant x plus 1. So take note, remember, that whatever you multiply in the denominator, you should also multiply the numerator with the same thing, so that you're multiplying the given by 1, so you're not changing anything. So in doing so, multiplying, so we have cosecant of x plus 1 over the product of cosecant of x plus 1 times cosecant of x minus 1 dx in the denominator. Now, why did we multiply the denominator or the given with the conjugate of the denominator? Now, we recall that the difference of two squares, u squared minus v squared, can be factored out into its conjugate binomials, u plus v times u minus v. So, it's the same thing if we multiply these two conjugate binomials, then the product would be a difference of two squares. So in multiplying the conjugate binomials in the denominator, so we copy the numerator, that's cosecant x plus 1. So multiplying that, we get cosecant squared x minus 1. And we recall also in our Pythagorean identities that 1 plus cotangent squared x is equal to cosecant squared x. Therefore, cotangent squared x equals cosecant squared x minus 1. Therefore, this expression in our denominator is equal to cotangent squared x. So, replacing that, we have cosecant x plus 1 over cotangent squared x dx. And then what's next? So what we can do is to simplify. So we separate into two fractions. So that's cosecant x over cotangent squared x dx plus the integral of 1 over cotangent squared x dx. If you can't think of ways to simplify it further, you just, if it's cosecant or cotangent or second or tangent, then you just have to express everything in terms of sine and cosine. So take note that 1 over co that cosecant x is 1 over sine x. And because cotangent is in the denominator, when you put that in the numerator, that becomes 1 over cotangent is tangent squared. Remember? 1 over cotangent x equals to tangent and the tangent is equal to sine over cosine. Therefore, we can multiply this by sine squared x over cosine squared x dx. And that 1 over cotangent squared x is tangent squared x dx. So simplifying it further, simplifying it further, we have integral of sine x over cosine x times 1 over cosine x dx. Do you see it? So we have, we canceled one sign, so what's left is sine x in the numerator 
but we still have two cosine excess in the denominator right and for the other one because we do not have an integration formula for tangent squared x we can express it in terms of the identity again recall 1 plus tangent squared x equals second squared x therefore tangent squared x equals second squared x minus 1 now why are we going to change this using this identity because we have an integration rule for second squared x so plus the integral of second squared x minus 1 dx and then recall again that tangent x equals sine x over cosine x and that second x equals 1 over cosine x so this is tangent x second x dx plus integral of second squared x dx minus integral of dx an integral of tangent second dx is second x and the integral of second squared is tangent x and the integral of dx is x plus c